Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Beat the Big Guys. I'm your host, Sandy Rosenthal, and today my guest is from the great state of California, more specifically the Bay Area, and her name is Jen Johnson. Hey, Jen. Hi, so nice to be here. You're so welcome. You know, this is actually my first interview in several weeks. Um, I'm recovering from pneumonia, and I'm so happy to be out of bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The <laughs> bed gets boring and, and it's not like I could do anything either. I could only stare at the wall. So I'm so oh, definitely no. happy to see you and um, really, really looking forward to, to listening to some of the great stuff you have to talk about. But first, I'm going to um, do a real quick um, and tell our listeners a little bit about you before we get started. OK, that's great. OK, here we go. Jen Johnson is an artist social impact professional, and the founder of two intentional housing communities in the Bay Area. These communities consist of a group of people living and caring for one house. Housing co-ops offer a solution to the housing crisis and provide stable community to the cooperative residents who work together to maintain the physical and emotional well-being of the spaces they share. Well, that's beautiful, and I look forward to hearing a whole lot about it because I can see how it probably is also solves a lot of the challenges that we have, not only in California, but all across the nation. So without further ado, Jen, could you please you, you take it away? <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Yeah, it's it's a joy to be able to talk about this because it's a really a huge part of my life, an integral part of my well-being. So I'm really happy to share. And Honestly, I think something I think is so funny is that when I'm in a situation, say like at a wedding or a family reunion type thing, and I'm talking to people I don't see a lot, they'll say, what's going on in your life? And, you know, I like to cover while I'm making art, I live in this co-op, I have this job, and I always think they're going to ask me about art, but they immediately say, what's the deal with that co-op? Because for them, I realized it's just so different and it's this day-to-day -day life thing that they can't imagine. So it's, you know, it's great to be able to kind of shed some light on that. So, yeah, I would say, you know, for me, I uh, grew up in a pretty normal quote unquote American household of a nuclear family living in one house uh, just with my brother, my mom, my stepdad, um, and so I didn't, wasn't exposed to community living for quite some time. So I, I did that. I lived in, in college. I lived in a dorm. Um, that wasn't really like a co-op. I didn't do the sorority thing or anything like that. Uh, and then I graduated in, from college and lived in New York city for a time. And I know, I noticed that I felt really isolated from people. I just had one housemate, one roommate, and, you know, we would occasionally hang out and talk to each other, grow a little bit of a friendship, but it, it felt like something was missing. So I actually started a happy hour, like a let's all get together, a political happy hour in Brooklyn. And uh, as the host, every time a new person would come in, I would say to them, you know, hi, welcome. How'd you hear about us? Why are you here? You know, get to know them a little bit. And inevitably, a, th a theme would come up which is that people were looking for close connection. They were lonely and they didn't know how to meet that need of theirs, that they didn't have this community, this sort of family, familial feeling of support and care. And so they were seeking it out in these other communities outside of the home, which is a great way to go about it. But, um, when I moved to the Bay Area, I again lived with one housemate and had the same issue come up, which was, I just feel like I'm expending so much energy trying to state my uh, social need and my need for care and love in my life. Uh, even though I had a partner, it's like, it's not about romantic love. It's like, we need connection in our lives. People need it. So I had a friend who moved into a co-op and I had never heard of this before. They were like, there's this weird place, you know, I'm going to try it out. 
it was a house in San Francisco that was huge, but had 38 people in it. And I said, that's, that blew my mind. I was, I wasn't interested at first. I was like, that's too much. I can't handle that. What are you doing? But then I kept hearing more and more about it and how wonderful it was for them. And I thought maybe that's something I could consider. And so one day they approached me and they said, yes, 38 people is too much for me. It turns out they had been there a year and, and it was a lot, even though it was really transformational for them. And so they said, what if we start our own? And I said, yes, that is exactly what I want to do. And so uh, I co-founded this community. It was right near Haight-Ashbury, actually on Ashbury Street, just kind of up the hill. And uh, we had a 12 person community that we started. And it was my first time living in community in that way. It was, it's one house, 12 people, you just one kitchen, one fridge, you know, like imagine that one fridge for 12 people. And uh, one thing that felt really different about it, about this situation from having just 12 roommates it's actually a community and people ask, you know, what does that mean? What makes it intentional? And I would say a big part of that is the decision that you are leading a household together, right? So you are sharing food. That's huge because once you're sharing food, you're in some ways, you're sharing a lot. You're sharing space. You're sharing uh, an agreement that you are feeding each other uh, by doing grocery shopping. So now there's like chores that you're getting into. It's really like the day-to-day -day living that you're agreeing that you share and you share the burden of cleaning and cooking and, um, and also the joys of that. Um, but yeah, I would say it was pretty mind blowing for me and a huge difference. And when you make a big shift like that, there are immediately things that struck me as hard and then things that struck me as great. And so I think for me, the thing that I was like, this just blew my mind was after living as an adult for a number of years, having kind of this control over my own space, it took me a little bit to realize that not everyone feels the same way about their space. And so I needed to very slowly have that, um, or quickly, honestly, have that uh, challenged my assumptions of like, what do I expect from how my space looks and feels? What are my expectations about what quiet hours are and things like that? Uh, and how we communicate with each other. And it really, while it was challenging at first, it actually, I would say, like cracked open my mind to the fact that there are so many different ways that people think and live, that it helped me build empathy for people who have different experiences, different approaches to life. And then not just empathy, but I learned so much from these people who are in my life day in and day out. And that brings me to the joys, which is that I honestly, there's so many. Um, I'm a very social person and I learn so much from the people around me. I've become a much more emotionally aware and thoughtful person, more conscientious. I'm much more able to navigate challenging conversations and conflict, whether it's in the home or in the workplace or just in the world. Uh, I've learned a lot about how to communicate about my needs. So there's just so much that I've gained from this. Um, and I mean, down to, I didn't really know how to cook with like spices, other than like basil before I lived in a co-op and now I can make so many other things. So there's just so much that we get from that kind of communing with each other. Uh, and so, yeah, I lived in that co-op for about three years before a group of us decided that we wanted to go to the East Bay and move to Oakland and start another community. And that's where I currently am. I'm inside that community home and we've been here since 2019 
And this was a, we went even a little smaller. So we're seven people here and, um, you know, it's been, it's been really lovely. Honestly, I think a, a great example of that is during quarantine, during the pandemic, we had each other. A lot of people were living in isolation and that's really, really hard or people who maybe had three or four housemates. And so you'd think, well, they have a pod, they have each other, but they woke up one day within quarantine to realize that they don't get along with the people they live with. And suddenly that's who they have. And so for me, I got to wake up and say, thank goodness I've put all of this time and energy into the people who surround me day in and day out, because now we have each other and it's not the best situation that we're in right now, but we, we bonded so hard. It was like being at summer camp or something. We put on, you know, there's a lot of anxious time during that whole saga and uh, we supported each other emotionally. We made dinner for each other every night and uh, every week or two would have an event for ourselves that was just where our pod, but, you know, instead of just kind of struggling along, let's have, um, dinner is now Western themed. So everyone wear your cowboy hat. And we brought some lightness to each other through, through that kind of play and support. So I think that's huge and has, you know, been a highlight for me. Um, and I, the other thing that I would say is, when I think about, you know, the people that I live with and who they are to me, it doesn't feel like they are friends. It feels like they are family. And so I do feel like what we've created is this level of connection and support in this community that is a whole different category of relationship that a lot of modern Americans don't have. And I think you know, from my experience, our longing for is like people who see you in your good and your bad days, in your moments of having pneumonia and laying in bed. And they're thinking, you know, um, Sandy's not doing so well right now. So we're going to make Sandy some soup and we're going to help take Sandy to the doctor. Like you have those people around you uh, in this kind of, it's like a nuclear family, but it's people that you chose to surround yourself with. And so it's really magical. I think it's, I, it's something that I, when I have the wisdom in the morning to think about what I'm grateful for, it's on my list at the top or near the top is I'm so grateful that I live with a group of people who care about me and my well-being and have wisdom to offer me and support for when I'm not doing so well and who teach me how to offer that to them. So that's what I, that's what I'm experiencing. What we're working on right now is actually we're kind of in a process of looking at right now we rent uh, because that's what you can do in the Bay Area as we think about uh, how this solves the housing crisis, like you mentioned in my bio, um, you know, I think there's, it solves a crisis of isolation as I was speaking to, but it's also much more affordable to live this way than it is to live, uh, alone in your one bedroom apartment or even with a partner because of the way that rents are structured here. And so my rent is maybe like, um, half of what, or maybe uh, like a little more than half of what it would be if I didn't live in this style. Um, and we have a huge backyard and an amazing kitchen with beautiful lighting. Uh, and so there's the financial element of it as well as when you're sharing food. I mean, I don't pay as much for fully stocked kitchen. You know, when I was living on my own, I would spend as much money, but be like, I can only get one vegetable this week or it's going to go bad. Mm -hmm. So we're really, I, what I found is that people who are drawn to community living are coming from a, a desire to have that community in their lives, but also it's more inclusive. So you find people who are 
less likely to be like say in the bay area like tech millionaire or like that kind of person you're gonna find people who are living in the bay who are able to access the bay because of this kind of living who are artists uh, who are activists who are doing what they believe in and can afford to do that because they're choosing this other way to live so you don't have that's to really beautiful a lawyer. Uh, right yeah so say, we're trying to figure to out <laughs> how to extend that and um how to maybe make something a little more permanent for ourselves well we have a lot to work with here <laughs> and if, is, is it okay if I ask you a couple of questions? Of course, yeah. <clears throat> well, this is, I'm, I'm so excited on so many levels. Uh, I, I can, I love, I love the way this all wraps up is um, it's like being in a big family where you can choose your family members. Yeah. I was raised uh, Catholic and Catholics spend a lot of time with their brothers, with their brothers and sisters, kids. And, and so I was I spent a lot of time with my cousins. So it feels like I have this gigantic family. Uh, I, I also want to point out that in Europe, it is not unusual for a family to have their parents living with them and their grandparents living with them. Mm -hmm. uh, this idea of the house with the picket fence and only the mom and the dad and the kids doesn't really work. It doesn't really work. I'm not sure where that started in America. I'm sure there's books about it. It doesn't really work. Uh, while I was sick with um, and with pneumonia, I, I happened to be at my daughter's house where we have a duplex. And so I got to see my grandchildren every single day. And I'm certain that that's why I ended up, why I ended up not having to go to the hospital. I had hugs mm -hmm. every day. But uh, I didn't really want to talk about me. I just wanted to talk about how it, how I so agree mm -hmm. with the idea that the insular um, household really is not um, ideal. Uh, and yeah. lots and lots of problems with it, which we've gone over. So um, so let, let's let see. Um, the, the I also thought um, I, I had the I was thinking to myself that not only does this uh, idea for housing work so well um, with for all the reasons that you said, but we also have kind of work co-ops too, which kind of started, I don't know, about 20 years ago, which, which kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of the same thing, but we don't want to, that's a whole nother subject, but there's, there's that too, which, but, but you, you're focused on more in, 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 in where you live. Uh, I, I also want to point out that um, one fridge for 12 people, you know, um, 50 years ago, there was families often 12 people with one fridge mm -hmm. and one bathroom. Yeah. And somehow we made it work. Now, I was from yeah. the six and one bathroom. And I swear to you, somehow it was never a problem. Yeah, you deal with it. I mean, people, that's the thing that's funny to me is that people hear a stat like I'll say you know 12 people and they're like how many bathrooms did you have and it was in that house it was two and a half um you know and so the one the half was just a toilet really uh and people then were like aghast <laughs> how could you do it but the truth is we adapt you find yourself in the circumstances that you chose to be in or that you are in and you find a way you find a way and, and not everyone has to shower at the, the same five minutes. Right. <laughs> uh, so now the, uh, this is just, this is so much fun. So I was, was fascinated by the, the thing that you thought was hard and that didn't surprise me. And that is the uh, pe people's idea of space can be very, very different. Um, I'm the sort uh, that I could, I could have people walking through my office and I don't even care. Uh, I could have people rummaging through my door, drawers and I don't even care. So I am at the loosest possible, but there's some people that are the opposite. Uh, and I think there's a name for them. I think they're called territorial. And mm. and, there's, and it's, it's psychological. They just don't like people in their space. Okay. And, and uh, I think someone with who is what we, what I, what I'm calling territorial might have, have a bit of a hard time with 
the the sort of living arrangement you're talking about, but maybe not. Maybe they just need to try it. Yeah, I think, well, there's a few different personality types that I think struggle with intentional living from what I've seen. I agree that that's one type and I am kind of that way. And so I like, that's what I struggled with, like I said, but what I think is you may hear this whole story and think to yourself, well, that's not for me because I'm territorial or that's not for me because I'm an introvert or, you know, whatever that is that you think might be a challenge. But the question is, are you willing to grow? Are you willing to challenge parts of yourself to see if that is something you're so committed to keeping as a quality that you have, or if that's something that you could learn from and get through. And for me, I mean, honestly, I think what I experienced was that I was caring about every single thing. And it took, I I had some resistance at first, but it took me a while to be like, oh, you don't need to care about every single thing. It doesn't all need to bother you. And so now I'm like, yeah, let people do what they want to do. Great. I don't care about what cups we have in the, like, I wanted all matching cups, you know, cause that's like how I would do it. But it, it turns out that it didn't matter. It didn't matter at all. And, and, you know, you still can drink water out of a cup that doesn't match another cup. And so just having to see that and get through it was like, oh, <laughs> I don't, it doesn't matter. Uh, So that's like nice because then my immune system can just be like, oh, I don't have to be freaking out all the time about all these details. You raise a very good point about affordability. The the insular home is extremely expensive. It's really formidably expensive and unnecessary and wasteful. Uh, The whole Airbnb uh, when it all started, it was the be all end all. It was going to fix all our society's ills. And then, of course, it got abused. Um, but but in the beginning, it was about better utilizing space and 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 utilizing this wasted space. It was so it was supposed to be save the world. But of course, as, as I mentioned, it was abused. Lots of things get abused. And, and it did as well, even though Airbnbs are still around. Uh, and 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 um, <clears throat> and really are great, you know, when they're not being when they're not being abused. Uh, so I, I think this has been an eye opening um, for me. I, I I learned a lot. Um, I I I I live the duplex life when I'm in the Bay Area, and I which is not exactly what you were talking about, but it's definitely not insular home. And yeah. Mm-hmm. We love it. We we love be, be picking up the kids after school, uh, and and being there. And it's uh, it, it's absolutely fab. It's great for me. Uh, I can see my grandkids. It's great for my daughter. She gets help because she works. Um, I'm gonna plug for my daughter. She's a head of sales for Open AI. Oh, all right, right. So she's a busy girl. Must be busy. Busy. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> and yeah, and uh, so. I I pick bring the kids to school in the morning and pick them up after school and um and it and and I'm loving it you know I couldn't be happier so th- this was absolutely wonderful um and I hope that our listeners enjoyed it as much but is there anything else since we're about run out of time is there anything else you want to add before we sign off Jen anything else I want to add I just think it's what I would say is that if it's something that is at all interesting to you, life is long. So try it out. Mm -hmm. You can always go back to the insular life if you decide it's not for you, but Hey, give it a go. Great words of advice. Try it out. You can always go back. Absolutely. Jen, Jen, thank you so much. It was absolutely wonderful having you on our show. Thank you. Glad to have the opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you to the listeners for joining us today. We hope you like this episode. Please be sure to rate, like, and subscribe to the podcast on all your favorite platforms. And remember, no matter who you are, you too can beat the big guys.